Hi everyone, Cassie here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel for another video. Today we, I'm going to be sharing a bunch of cards using some of the brand new spell binders for July. Uh, and it's like a Christmas in July. So we've got several collections and I'm gonna show you from those collections. We have So first up we have our Stitchmas Christmas collection and Miles is gonna come through. He is my quality control as always. And I have a couple of cards using the Stitchmas Christmas collection. This first one here is the Stitch Diamond Argyle. And I die cut this out of some blue cardstock and then sat and stitched it with some gold thread. Oh my goodness. I just think that is so, so pretty. And then this one is our Stitched Petal Diamond. And once again, die cut that out and then stitched it using some gold and some red. But these are kind of great for if you, like me, uh, like to sit and watch television at night and just kind of keep your hands busy so that maybe you're not partaking in snacks. <laughs> this kind of thing is so great. And I like doing these. These are just kind of fun. Um, and I, I really enjoy them. All right, next up we have the Celebrate the Season collection and I have a few things from that. I have this adorable Tweet Cardinal. It is Check it out, check it out. You get this little die and you can make this darling little cardinal with it. It's so cute. Uh, and then also I've got the uh, Stylish Merry Christmas. So I made this one with it and I also made this one with it. How fun are those? I like how big it is, takes up the full front almost of an A2 size card and then you just have to add a few little elements to behind and it's awesome. Then we have the Winter Garden Collection. The Winter Garden Collection includes the, um, I already used it a couple times. We've got our Winter Evergreen. So here's our Winter Evergreen. Here's some Winter Evergreen. We also have some Winter Evergreen here. So I thought it was just super fun to use in all these different ways. It's beautiful. And then we also have the Letterbox. So here's the Letterbox die. It is fantastic. Um, and here's the, the piece I have all cut out. So cute. And this flap you could have come down, which I think is super cute. And if you wanted, you could probably make the flag go up and down if you just used a little brad. Wouldn't that be cute? So there's that. Then we also have the Glimmer Greetings. And I am going to have blog posts of each of the different collections so that you can go and check those out and get a little closer look at some of those pictures if you want. But the, the Glimmer Greetings include our Essential Diamond, which is not actually a glimmer but um, I used it on these two. So you saw this one before. It's, it is a bunch of diamond die cuts and I used it on this one. I also used it as a background for this one. And then I used it on this one. So here are some of the diamonds in the background as well. Some more of our Glimmer Greetings include our Blooming Ornament, which you see here. And then you also saw this one earlier. So I did it on some craft cardstock using some different colors of the Spellbinders Glimmer Foil. And here I did it on white using some of those same colors. And then I also have it on some different colored cardstock using one of these Glimmer Foils. So a lot of great options with that. And then we also have the Merry Glimmer Sentiments, which I've used on a bunch of these cards. So you've got the Season's Greetings, Merry Christmas. I used some greens and some reds, Christmas greetings. And it's great because you can mix and match the sentiments so much. So Merry Christmas Greetings, Merry and Bright. It has a bunch in there and I glimmered all of those. And then the last one I have to show you today, we're gonna add, um, we're gonna make a card afterwards um, but I have the parcel and post. So there's three different parts to this that I have. So I've got the parcel and post mailbox, which is the mailbox, and then you get all these fun little flowers and things. Um, and then you can get the all occasions mailbox greeting, which this glimmer comes from, the glimmer foil uh, plate comes from that. And then I'm gonna show you the parcel and post heart decor. But like I said, go to my blog, I'll have it linked down below. Um, I'll have a generic link to my blog. And then I'll also have the blog posts that are for each of the different kit, or not kits, but each of the different um, collections that have come out. So you can go check those out a little bit closer. But let's head into making our card. 
All right, we're gonna have this going real time so you can see everything. Uh, we'll eventually speed it up, but I wanted to show you all that comes in our parcel and post mailbox die. So this one is a great all around uh, die set. Look at all those dies. You can make your mailbox. You get all these beautiful flowers and leaves and you even get your little envelopes. You could have it just bursting with envelopes or flowers or whatever you wanted. Um, and I'm going to put that away, but I'm going to leave this die out. That die is going to go along with our All Occasions Mailbox Greeting, which is a glimmer foil um, plate. So We've got our glimmer plates. This one's the all occasion one. It comes with these four great sentiments for, again, all occasions. And I'm gonna pull out one of those. And I use one on uh, the other card that I showed you earlier, but here's some smooth white card stock. I'm gonna pull in this glimmer foil variety pack. This is the glimmer aluminum. And I am going to use this gold one. It's so pretty. Uh, it comes all taped up and I save that little tape piece. And then, I'm going to use my little foil cutting system that I have, and I'll have those things linked down below. But that comes with a self-healing mat. You have this really great like ruler grid that you can cut through those lines. And then you've got these little cutters, one for foil and one for paper. And I'm just gonna cut off this piece of foil that I need, just cutting through there. And then I'll put all those pieces away and then as you can see, I have a green light on. I'm going, I put my plate on top of there and I've pressed my button. That's your timer button and it's going to blink. And while it's blinking, that means it's heating up your plate. And you're just gonna, I'm gonna get everything ready to go while it's doing that. It takes a little bit of time, but you just definitely wanna make sure it's nice and hot. And as I'm doing this, no worries, my boys are far away from the heat plate, but they're also smart enough not to come too close to it because they can tell it's hot. Uh, I'm going to bring in my die cutting machine. It's not going to have any of the plates with it. It's just going to be open. I'm going to set that in here. And then you'll see these two plates. There's like a nice, like a green plate and a clear plate. Those work with the glimmer system. But once that button stops beeping, it's going to go off here in just a second. I'm going to take my foil that I've cut and I'm going to place that right on top of my plate with the pretty side down. So it's gonna turn off here, right there it turned, it's well, it's still on. But what I like to do is I, uh, I pull my plate out, set my foil on top, and then I'll set my paper on top, just trying to make sure that I don't like move anything over the top of it, just kind of placing it on there. And then I set my two plates, my mint green one and my my clear ones just straight down on top, hold everything in place so that nothing shifts, and then I run that very slowly, that whole system, through my die cutting machine. And I'll even kind of go back and forth a little bit, just making sure that I get that nice and foiled. I'll go back a couple times. And then once it's done, I try to peel everything up without shifting things. Keep in mind, your plate is still going to be very hot, so be careful. And then I'll show you, you can tell it's foiled and I'll pull that away carefully and it foiled beautifully. So there you have that. So now I am going to turn off everything. I'm done with my foil system, but I'll use my magnetic piece, pull off my plate so that it can get cool. So I can put that away, turn off my machine. It's gonna take a little while to cool down. Um, and then I'm going to bring in that die that I showed you earlier and we're gonna die cut out our sentiment. And then we can move on to doing some assembly. But when you do tack this down, make sure you don't put any tape over what you've just foiled, because then you can pull that foil up. Okay, so here are the pieces for the parcel and post heart decor. This is an add-on. There's also a Christmas one. But here's the heart one, which is, I think, good for any occasion. Uh, those are the pieces. You've got love. You've got little stems that work great, and I'll show you how those work with each of the letters. And you've even got an X so that you can do XO if you wanted. But I've got this piece of cardstock. It has a little bit of a wood grain background to it. That's gonna be my panel. And I've cut that down to four inches by five and a half inches, so I'll have a little bit of a border on the left and right hand side. I'm gonna go ahead and glue that down to my card base, which is an A2 size card base. And then I am going to pull out the mailbox. I went ahead and die cut everything ahead of time. This is what's fun about these dies 
is you could just go crazy die cutting. Just, you know, turn on a little bit of music, grab out all the different colors you want and just start die cutting. And then you save those pieces, um, you know, just off to the side. And then when you're ready to start assembling, you assemble, but you could just die cut like crazy, which is what I did using various colors. And then um, you can assemble later. I'm going to have leftover pieces and that's okay. I can save those for cards down the road. But here are the, the pieces that I die cut using both the parcel and post mailbox and the parcel and post heart decor. I'm going to assemble my envelope. I'm even going to put a little heart on the envelope. And I would say the tools that are so useful would be like some reverse tweezers and then some sort of pickup stick that you can pick up your little pieces and stick those down. I'm using this one and I will definitely pull in my reverse tweezers for later on, but we're going to just assemble. I've got little purple flowers and you've got your greenery that goes on top and we just use liquid glue and this stuff dries pretty quickly, but you just assemble and just go to town. For each of those letters, this one works, this little stick here works great with the O. So there's a little stick for almost all those letters. <laughs> These two are going to work great for the L and the E because they are flat. And then we've got this one that works perfect for the V because it's just a little top. They've thought of everything. And then here we have our E. And then these will be great to be able to stick outside of our little mailbox. I'll assemble this one, just put some dots of glue on each of those, and then I'll put a little purple dot on, on top of that. But imagine your color combinations, and you know, if you just die cut a bunch, you could just have so much fun making all these cards. It's the die cutting, really, that I suppose probably not necessarily takes the longest. It just depends on how much you're die cutting out. I die cut out enough probably for three cards when I did die cut. Um, but it was so much fun. I love sets like this because it's, in my mind, it's it, it's kind of mindless. You just kind of die cut and you can put together and then you end up with this beautiful thing that didn't require a lot of your brain power, in my opinion. So those are always the best. I love to craft for stress relief anyway. It's a therapy and these are the types of things that just... Oh, so much fun. All right, so I've already pieced together everything. Let's start assembling this card. I'm going to put down my mailbox and just keep that open portion open, obviously. Here's where my reverse tweezers come in fantastically. And you can just sit, stick that on top of there, but keep that open so that you can plug all of your little pieces inside. And I'll just start putting some of it down. I played around with placement for a little while. And we've got our little hearts. You wouldn't have to use the stems on those, but I thought those were fun to have their little, little pieces holding them like they're popping out. You've got your different flowers. So much fun. The Christmas one I think would be a blast as well. But there's all that greenery that comes with the parcel and post mailbox. So you wouldn't need all the add-ons for sure. And I think that the little um, pieces themselves, the, the separates, the parcel and post heart decor would work fine even without the mailbox. I decided to trim down these pieces just a little bit because I didn't want them to go up too high. So now that I've kind of centered those in there, I'm going to glue those in. And then for our little um, post, we're going to use a foam square, but I went ahead and glued down my sentiment first. And then here's where our foam squares are going to come in. I'll put a big one up top and a smaller one at the bottom. I just wanted those to stick out a little bit more than everything else. Putting that in there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of liquid glue so that my mailbox portion doesn't pop up too much. And then I decide I probably need a foam square on the other side of our mailbox opening. So I'll just put one of those down in there and then push everything down. And then I'm gonna embellish with the rest of it, the outside and the inside, but check it out. I love how this turned out. So I am gonna have blog posts linked down below so you can go check out all the new release. Uh, if you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button and definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. And as always, I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye everybody.